My name is Daniel Bushell. Class action lawsuits filed against cell phone manufacturers. Coming up. Insurers refuse public liability for cell phone use. The warning buried deep inside your mobile. And the next casualty catastrophe after tobacco and asbestos. I would hold my cell phone here and the tumor was right there. I always held it on my right side, right here. The industry should have put these warnings on and they told us a long time ago. Professor Darius Lashinsky is one of the world's leading radiation biologists and brave. He knew phone manufacturers would try to end his career for printing groundbreaking research proving cell phones do cause biological damage. Professor Lashinsky joins us. Great to see you. How did the industry react? So far, I think I didn't experience any smear campaign. But uh, in my case, it was just that uh, industry used the influence to, to prevent funding of my research projects. Studies like Professor Leshinsky's now allow top neurosurgeons to issue a stark cell phone warning. It's essentially cooking the brain. Ellie Marx's husband, Alan, suffered serious memory loss after years of using a mobile. At 2 a.m. one night, he had a massive seizure. Surgeons found a tumor the size of a golf ball right where he held the phone. Ellie, thank you so much for joining us. Why are you and so many others suing the industry? There's many, many, many others that are already deceased from this, that are dying from this, younger than my husband. There's some, you know, as, some as young as 28 who are deceased, and their neurosurgeons actually told them that it was probably their cell phone use. We had about 20 cities and states that wanted to legislate as San Francisco had, and they were all threatened with lawsuits by this industry. This is a photo of Brett Bocock's brain. The top quarter responsible for body balance has had to be removed after surgeons found this vast tumor right where he held the phone. A US national rowing champion, now he can barely move. Brett, great to speak to you. Tell us about the class action lawsuit against the phone industry. The only way you can really educate the public against big business is through lawsuits. It wasn't until the district attorneys in the United States sued the, and got involved and sued the cigarette industry that there was actual, they, had to pay millions and millions, hundreds of millions of dollars for public education as to the dangers of smoking. That's what's going to happen with cell phones. It's just unequivocal, categorical that these things cause cancer. And it's also, they don't want you to know that. This is on the same trajectory as smoking, because if you look at smoking in the 60s, they had doctors coming on TV and on print saying, hey, smoke Marlboro or smoke this brand because it's good for your cough. And see how well camels agree with your throat. Hey, Winston, America's best-selling, best-tasting filter cigarette. More dangerous for children because their schools are a lot thinner. At least you can't buy cigarettes unless you're 18. But you can go, a five-year-old could go and buy a phone. Phone manufacturers, young children are targeted. There are now working cell phones, even for babies. The Glow phone is for kids maybe five to eight, and the Fly phone is for tweens. Samantha Miller's funeral was on her 18th birthday. Phone use through childhood first gave her headaches, reports the Daily Mail, then the brain tumor that killed her. In the West, brain tumors have overtaken leukemia, notes Senator Lynn Allison as the number one child killer illness. But doctors warn that's the tip of the iceberg. Clinical studies find young men who keep phones in their pockets have much lower chances of producing offspring, while women often store them on their chest. I would just tuck it right in to my bra. Tiffany France got breast cancer aged just 21, right where since childhood she stored her phone. These spots mark the areas of Donna James's cancer. Her doctors call this a new breed of distribution that exactly matches where women keep their phone. It's very unusual. Uh, uh, pattern where these multiple small cancers were confined to the upper inner aspect of, of the breast. And so I, I've never seen anything quite like this. This is a radiation detector in normal surroundings around 30 microvolts a meter. Microwave ovens reach 800 microvolts. Wi Fi rotors use the same radiation technology. Loading a film on a tablet PC reaches 2,000. Some of the world's best-selling smartphones register over a thousand times above normal levels. 
Insurers have in fact stopped covering cell phone manufacturers for public health. Insurance firms privately call cell phones the next public casualty catastrophe after asbestos and cigarettes. Phone manufacturers have now quietly inserted a legal disclaimer. On iPhones, you have to go to Settings, General, About, at the bottom scroll down to Legal, and at the end, RF Exposure, Radio Frequency Exposure. Unlike most pages, the small print here can't be enlarged, but it reads, carry iPhone at least 10 millimeters away from your body. At the same time, the industry says all its studies show phones are perfectly safe. Radio waves from cellular phones are safe. Conflict of interest, Harvard ethics professor Lawrence Lessig calls industry paid studies which consistently conclude phone radiation is harmless. Independent scientists, meanwhile, overwhelmingly find the most serious problems from DNA damage, three times lower sperm counts, 290% more brain tumors, autism, and birth defects. Former senior White House advisor and leading epidemiologist Dr. Deborah Davis has testified to Senate on the subject. She joins us. Great to see you. How do you explain? The completely opposite findings between industry and independent studies. Anytime there was independent research, what industry would do was three things. First, they would go attack the scientists who had done the studies. They would try to get them fired, they'd try to get their funding taken away, or they would fraud. Then when that didn't work, they hired other scientists who knew nothing about the field to do studies that looked like they were replicating the other studies, but they really weren't. And when all of those things failed, they wrote a memo in which they said, if the cellular industry done its job, we think we war gamed the science. That's a quote, war hyphen gamed the science. Now science is not a matter of war, it's not a matter of games. We're deadly serious about our health and that of our children. War Gaming reveals this leaked Motorola email is industry paid studies purely for reassuring the public. We have sufficiently war gamed the issue. A sting has exposed how easy it is to get phony studies in print. Posing as a serious scientist, John Bohannon sent in a paper full of schoolboy errors, offering payment for publication. Incredibly, more than half the journals in these countries all around the world published it, even lying to the public that the study had been peer-reviewed. Investigative journalist Anthony Gucciardi has broken numerous health scandals. Great to see you. Surely big business wouldn't fake studies to put millions of lives at risk. Do we have documented precedents? This is exactly like Eli Lilly, which in the 1980s knew that Prozac was leading to suicides and aggressive behavior, the exact opposite effect of what they wanted. They knew that in the 1980s after they conducted the research. They hid the research, and it wasn't exposed until 2005 from the BBC. But then they would have their corporate interests do studies and talk about how great it was. Now, of course, they're required to admit, yeah, the antidepressants do cause suicide, aggressive behavior, pretty much every shooter is on them. When these cell phone companies are forced to admit, yeah, the cell phone radiation does cause brain tumors, you know, it does do all this, and they're already saying this in their manuals. So it's already coming out, but once the public is aware of this fact, it will be even worse depressants. It will be even worse than tobacco. We invited the powerful industry lobby CTIA to discuss the issues raised in this report. They sent this one-line refusal. Thank you for contacting us, but we will not be able to do this interview. The industry's most respected journalist is Dr. Louis Schlesin, editor of Microwave News since 1981. Louis, great to speak to you. There seems to be a parallel universe, what the industry says and everyone else. The whole system is broken. People are not being told the truth. It's crazy. You know, it's easy to say we made a mistake on tobacco after we know that tobacco is killer. The point is, is to take action Actions being taken outside the US. France is moving schools back from Wi-Fi to cabled internet. Countries from Germany to Israel and Finland are moving to stop cell phone sales to kids. But Obama just made industry chief lobbyist Thomas Wheeler head of the regulator itself, the FCC. A former administration official calls it another astonishing conflict of interest. So doctors who want parents at least informed of cell phone dangers to their kids say they aren't holding their breath. Seek truth from facts. This is The Truth Seeker.